Hello and welcome to Bruce Princeton Guitar Lessons. Today's lesson is going to be Janie Needs a Shooter from Letter to You. Thanks very much to subscribe star Carl Sutton for the request.
Hello and welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that walkthrough. So now what we're going to do is go through all the individual parts. Okay, so the tempo is approximately 76 BPM. So quite a slow one here. And it's in the key of A major. So let's take a look at the chords for Bruce first. So uh, Steve's parts we're going to be looking at in a bit. Okay, so the idea with this song, you've got the combination of the two or three guitars that makes it sound really cool. So I think Steve is doing, Steve and Nils are doing a little bit more complicated parts than Bruce is doing. Okay, um, so chord wise, we've just got A major. So you're gonna bar uh, D, G, and B strings with your first finger and block the A string. That's how Bruce likes to play his A chords. Okay, and then you've got a D major chord. So you've got first finger, second fret G, third finger, third fret B, middle finger, second fret high E. You can also feel free to use the sort of power chord version where you block the high E as well, which Bruce likes a lot as well. So that's D major, then E major. So that's all six strings, middle finger, second fret A, third finger, second fret D, first finger, first fret G. And we've got the F sharp minor chord here. So here, for the F sharp minor, you're just gonna bar your um, first finger on the second fret of the G, B, and E, and use your third finger on the fourth fret A, little finger, fourth fret D. And then you block the low E string out. So that's the way Bruce likes to play his F sharp minor chords. Uh, as it saves you barring all of them, and it means you can get a quicker sort of transition to the open chords. Um, so this is actually called an F sharp minor over C sharp, uh, but in the song structure, which I'll put up on the screen now, I've just referred to it as an F sharp minor just for simplicity. Uh, again, the song structures will be in the description, so don't forget to check that out. And any chords in brackets means there's more than one chord in the particular bar. Okay, so let's take a look at the main kind of bars for Bruce, okay? So again, feel free to embellish these. These are just a kind of foundation. With, with Bruce plays the guitar, he'll change it up every single time. And the fact that this has got quite a live feel to it, it does vary quite a lot. So I've just got the kind of main foundations there and the main riffs, etc. So we've got A major. So what you're gonna do here um, is basically put the A string, D, G, and B, then down on the A, up on the G. So alternate picking, down, up, down, up, down, up. And these are all quavers or eighth notes. One and two and three and four. So let the four uh, ring out there. And then you've got D major, same thing, we're just picking from the D string. D string, down, up, down, up, down, up. So D, G, B, E, D, B. Okay, so the, the intro, for example, just goes A, D, back to A, D. Cool. Um, and then we've also got a nice uh, kind of bar of E at the end of uh, a lot of the sections. So here, um, I think what's happening is you're doing E major, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, so take your E, then pick the E, A, D, and then the kind of triple E strings here, E, B, and G strings. Then pick the downstroke and the low E, and then up, down, up, down, up, down. Up, down, up, down, up. Again, because there's so many layers, it's actually quite hard to <laughs> work out what on earth's going on half the time. Um, the idea of this, again, this is a foundation. If you was playing this in a band, you'd have Bruce playing something like this, and Steve doing his parts, and then uh, um, Neil's doing something similar. But they're all kind of riffing, you know, it's got that great, I think that's what they wanted to do with this album, to get that really nice sort of raw live feel, okay? which I think, you know, it's worked perfectly. And it's, it's, you can just tell that they're kind of almost just jamming the songs. So again, the song structure has got a big part of you learning this song. So let's just go through the first, uh, the second and the third verse. So structure-wise, exactly the same, okay? So you've got A major, then D, back to A, then D, and then do all that again. Stay on the D, an A, and two bars of D, then A, then E. And you're all nicely set up for the chorus. Cool, so the chorus, um, <coughs> I think, um, so when we do Steve's parts in a bit, it's more of a picking pattern. So you've definitely got some, you know, whether it's Neil's or Steve, it's quite difficult to tell. 
I did aim to want to practice this using the um, you know the Letters to You documentary on Apple TV, but they don't do this song, which is <laughs> as a right pain because it's been it was really helpful for if I was the priest because you can just really get up close and see what they're playing. So uh, yeah, it's a lot more working out by ear this one. So <clears throat> so basically, what I've suggested here <coughs> is a nice strumming pattern. Okay, so what you've got here is um, one, two, and. Uh, so the first note is a crotchet quarter note, it's downstroke last for one beat. Then you've got a quaver or eighth note, half a beat. So one, two, then you've got two semiquavers or sixteenth notes that last for a quarter of a beat each. One, two, and a. And that's how you would count that. So it's a really common, call this a knocking on heaven, heaven's door Dylan strumming pattern. So you can use this as a foundation for hundreds of hundreds of songs. One, two, and a. And then A major. A split bar, so two beats each. One, two, and a three, four, and then D, and then A. So all do using this pattern. So it's a two bar phrase. Cool, so that two bar phrase is done um, three times, and then you start it off again. And then D, picking them we did earlier, and then A major. E major. So really quite quite simple, but lots of good stuff in there. Nice strumming. Again, if you're if you're improving your strumming patterns, you've got some nice split bar strumming pattern there. You've got some nice picking as well. So yeah, structure wise, first chorus, second chorus, exactly the same. Now the third chorus basically you start off the same. So you do the three rounds of F sharp minor to A, and then D J. Round one, round two, round three, and then round four, because it's basically a double chorus, you can do something like this. One and two and three and four and. So basically kind of a crescendo, build up down strokes with a D major chord. One and two and three and four and. So it really goes uh, build up. Bit of dynamics there as well, and then basically you just do the um, for the the double chorus, just do exactly the same as the kind of first and second chorus, but miss out the A and the E at the end. So what I mean by that is, is the second half of the third chorus. That's not my D to A three times. And then on the fourth time, then this is where it all kind of dies down a bit. And then you've basically got the outro. So the outro, you're just going to do. It's basically nine rounds of two bars of A and two bars of D. Yeah, feel free to embellish it and then just end on an A. It fades out on record. Okay, so they're all of Bruce's parts. Okay, so let's take a look at the lead parts that are in the harmonica solo. So the bar before the harmonica solo kicks in, and you're going to come in with some lead parts, okay? So what you're going to do on the E of 1, on the bar before the harmonica solo, you're going to do a full tone bend on the 4th fret of the G string, then use your little finger to catch the 5th fret high E, and then do the same thing again. And then bend release on the 4th fret and pull off to the 2nd fret G. Or you can even pick the 2nd fret G, it's not a problem. So timing wise, 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 and 4 and. Okay, so that sounds really cool. Then the harmonica kicks in, you've got one bar of rest. And then in bar 3 of this solo, you're going to go 1, 2, 3 and 4 and. So two full tone bends on the fourth fret of the G string. One, two, three, and four, and. Okay, one, two, three, and four, and. Then two and a half beats rest. And this is where you're in the uh, A minor pentatonic. So you've got A minor pentatonic first shape, A major pentatonic first shape. Uh, if you're not too um, clued up on your pentatonics, head over to my other channel, jsmusicschool.co.uk. I've got a whole series on the minor pentatonic 
and I'll be doing one on the major pentatonic at some point as well. So you're going to come in on, this is bar four, the solo, um, but bar three of the actual harmonica playing. One, two, three, and four, and. So you've got this slow bend, seventh fret, G string, one, two, three, and four, and one, and catch the fifth fret of the E, and then on beat two, this bar, so one, two, three, four, and, okay? So I wanna go these last, this is bar one, two, three, four, and five of the harmonica solo. So one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, and, two, three, four. And it sounds like he's doing this kind of classic kind of uh, country style lick here. Quite low down in the mix but uh, something like this so coming in on beat two uh, this is one two three four five six seven of bar seven one two e and a three e and a four e and a something like this um so and this is kind of this sort of solo is in all right now by free it's really cool kind of type of uh, riffing here so hammer on fifth fret of the b to the seventh fret of the b so one two e then hit the, I would do an upstroke on the fifth fret, high E, one, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So basically you've got this three note riff four times, okay? Then one, two and three, four, something like that. Um, for the penultimate bar, one, one, two and three. Four. So bend, release, pull off, uh, bend, release, seventh fret, pull off to five on the G, and then seventh fret of the D. Uh, and just be conscious of what fingers I'm using there as well. I'm playing, and then on the D chord, you're just going to do a nice build up. Two and three and four work really well. So let me just go through that nice and slowly. So you start off this solo a bar before the harmonica actually kicks in. So the harmonica solo is eight bars but this solo is technically nine bars, if that makes sense. So, one E and a, two E and a, three and four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three and four and one, two, three and four and one, two, three, four and one, two, three, four, one, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one, Two and three, four, one and two and three and four and. Cool, so they are all the extra lead parts in the harmonica solo. Okay, so let's take a look at what I think Steve is doing. So I'm not too sure what Nils is doing as well, but something probably similar to Bruce and Steve. So I think this is probably Steve doing these parts. So capo fret two. Uh, and what it does is just a nice kind of a uh, balance between this kind of capoed, higher pitched, uh, rift bass stuff, and then Bruce's stuff. So what we're gonna do, G major, we're playing with your third and fourth fingers, okay? So because of the capo, that G then becomes an A to match with what Bruce is playing, okay? Um, so this is a G, gonna block the A string, and this is the picking pattern I think is going on. So all quavers are eighth notes, one and two and three and four and, in terms of picking, I'm going down, up, down, up, 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 down, up. And then leave the little finger there, do a C major, the little finger, and do the same kind of thing. So A, D, G, E, B, G, D, G. So down, up, down, up, 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 down, up. And G major. Now it sounds like he's doing this major seventh thing here, which sounds brilliant. And this is just in the bar three of the intro. Oops. Okay, so here, we're gonna do the uh, low E string, open G, and then E, B, and G, and then put your middle finger on the F sharp, which makes it a G major seven, which I can definitely hear in bar three of the intro, so. So ideally alternate picking down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, or you can even do down, up, 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 something like that. Okay, so that's bar three, and then got bar uh, 
4 is the same as bar 2. So let me just play what I think Steve is doing in the intro. So the first four bars, C major, so it just works really well. Um, yeah, and basically that G and C bar will become your main kind of G and C bars for the Steve parts. So this is the, uh, what I'm going to do is play the, the verse section. Okay, so, so it starts off the same G and then C. Now, I think uh, what's happening here is there's a few riffs going on, and I do think there's some more of these. It literally would take hours and hours to do them all. But what I would suggest is to do, take these as a foundation and do something slightly different, even add some in Bruce's parts. Maybe if you've got three guitars, if you're in a Bruce tribute act, um, you know, do another, you know, some riffs in the uh, standard tuning uh, and vary these up as well. So this is bar three of the verse. Just kind of like a sus four kind of sound. So these are all quavers, one and two and. So you pick in the low E, open G, then open B, then um, first fret B. One and two and, and then three and four E, four E and a, four E and a, okay? So here I'm going third fret low E, open G, open B, first fret B, back and do the E and the G strings again. These are all quavers or eighth notes. And then you've got some semi quavers, 16th notes, four E and a, four E and a. So down, uh, pick the B string, hammer on the straight away, and then up, uh, and then up on the uh, up on the little finger, third fret E, and then um, first fret B. So this bar again, one and two and three and four E and a, and then C major. And let's repeat that. Sounds really cool. Again, feel free to do something slightly different, but use those kind of foundations. And then, so once you've repeated that, those four bars twice, then you've got the C again, then G. Slightly different 16th note pattern here. One and two and. So it starts off the same as your, um, the bar that we had in the verse. And then hammer on again, zero, one of the B, then Three on the E, one on the B, and open B, and open G, and C major for two bars, and G major, and at the end of it you got this D major just before the chorus. Uh, we're going to do this. Sounds really cool. So you start off with D major. And you're just going to pick up the. Um, chord, D, G, B, E, all half a beat long here. Uh, quavers of eighth notes, one and two and, then D and G. Then ha take your middle finger off, which is, produces a D sus two chord. And then hammer on second fret, E. So you go one and two and three and four, E and. This sounds really cool. So one and two and three and four, E and. I really need to my nails and two and three and four e and just sounds really cool so that's basically all the main verse sections uh, and then for the chorus um, I've kind of put a little bit of picking and strumming uh, which kind of suits to kind of coincide with uh, what Bruce is doing so with, with the walkthrough you should hear what you know the whole kind of um, full picture looks like with strumming and picking and the combination of the two guitars so and I think Niels will just be doing something very similar to so add an extra layer. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, so we've got here E minor, second and third finger, but then your little finger on the um, third fret of the high E string. One and two and, so this again is an F sharp minor technically because of the capo. One and two and, and G major. So to pick the kind of the bottom bit of the chord to start with, one, and then open G, then high E, and then uh, open B. Okay, so down, down, up, up, and then do the same with the G, down with G, 
and then up, up, and C major. So it's pretty much the same thing. Do the basic parts of the chords first and do that picking pattern. I think that'll work really well in combination with uh, Bruce's parts, okay? So this is what I would do if I was, you know, arranging this for a, you know, a Bruce tribute act or something like that. So, and then you do that three times as normal, and then, and then the C major, it's arpeggio. You can definitely hear somebody on the record just strumming the chords. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And just before um, the kind of uh, going back to the verse or the harmonica solo, you've got this one and two and three and four and. Okay, so this is the first and second choruses, but using with Steve's parts, capo fret two. So um, D major, D then G, and then uh, hammer on open one and. So this is the D sus two, hit, hit the E string, hammer on and up strokes, third fret B one and two and, and then just pick um, D, G, E, B. Cool, so what I'm gonna do is gonna play um, what I think um, Steve's doing in the chorus section. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three. You do that three times. Just say this is the third time and the fourth time. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and. So it just works really nicely, I think. So um, there's also in the third verse, so structure-wise, again, is obviously all exactly the same. Just use these bars. If you're doing this in a band situation or open mic, one person on capo two, one person on open, that will sound phenomenal, I think. Okay, so um, there's some extra kind of lead riffs um, in the third verse. So there's four bars. So we use the same chords as normal. Uh, in bars three and four and seven and eight of the third verse, you've got some really cool riffs that I thought I'd go through. So what you've got uh, is going to pick the E, uh, E string, and then the D and the G, one and two. Then you're going to put your middle finger third fret B, third finger fourth fret G. Um, so again, I, you can hear all this during in the walkthrough, all these parts. I put it quite high up in the mix so you can hear it. One and two, and then and three and four and one and two and three and four and okay so what's happening here third finger fourth fret g middle finger third fret b first finger second fret g one and two and three and four e and one and two so three four two hits two hits on the two and three with your first finger on the second fret g then hammer on to using your third finger and do an upstroke. One and two and three and four and it sounds really cool. And then for the second bar, so this is bar four of the third verse. Oops. So here I've suggested using that uh, uh, same shape, but with your um, what you're going to do is slide it down. So you hit that uh, those two strings. One and slide down to one and two, and then pull off. Hit it so timing wise one and two and three four so that two bar phrase I think it sounds really cool and then something similar similar is happening in bar seven and eight so you're going to start off the same with the first three notes the first four notes one and two and then that pattern again this time I'm going to pull off on beat three, so one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four, one and two. Again, this could easily be done in open tuning or a different voicing. It just seems to work well here. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three. It's all quavers or eighth notes here. So E, D, G, three, four, three, four again, pull off. Two more, uh, three more hits on the two and three. On the third one, you pull off. Mm -hmm. 
Cool, so I think they're all the extra parts. Again, don't forget to um, double check with the song structure. So the idea is you don't have to use these picking patterns. Um, if you're playing this in a band and you're using the song structure, all you have to remember is to go down a tone from all the notes that are in the song structure because of the capo. So an A in the song structure is a G, a D in the song structure is a C, with this tuning, uh, an F sharp minor in the song structure is an E minor. So uh, hopefully you find that useful. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up or any comments or suggestions, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. And please subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications if you haven't already. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time. If you'd like to get guitar profiles, tab PDFs, backing tracks from any of these tutorials, head over to either the Subscribe Star page or my website, jsmusicschool.co.uk. Remember to subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications. Thanks very much. See you on the next one.